Hi, I'm Dr. Biju Raju, and in this video, I would like to share our experience exploring the conoid of sperm. I acknowledge the help and support from our senior optometrist Anjana in the making of this video. This video is also, in a way, a tribute to one of the first experimental physicists, a mathematician, and a German genius, Johann. Christoph Sturm, who, four centuries ago, described the conoid that forms the basis of all spherocylindrical lenses. But first, few basics. We all know that when light passes through a spherical lens, it is brought to a focus at its focal length as a single point. In a spherocylindrical lens, the light will not be focused to a single point. but into a conoid and this conoid that forms when light passes through an astigmatic system is called the conoid of sturm in honor of johann sturm who first described it as you can see from this red diagram taken from duens ophthalmology the cylinder has its power perpendicular to its axis therefore in the axis of the cylinder there is no power the power acts perpendicular to its axis let us take a look at what happens when light passes through a spiro cylinder or a system which has two curvatures with one steeper than the other for the sake of simplicity in this diagram only two rays of light are highlighted the one in orange in the vertical meridian and one in blue the horizontal It is seen in this diagram that both these rays are focused to two focal points of principal foci. Between the two foci is the interval of sturm and at the midpoint of the two foci is the circle of least confusion. Together they constitute the conoid of sturm. This is an experiment to explore the conoid of sturm. In order to locate the position and to understand the relationship of the two foci, the circle of least confusion, and the sturm's interval in the conoid of sturm, these are the materials required. We need a trial frame to place the lenses, a light source. We used a torch, plus five diopter sphere, a plus five diopter cylinder, a screen. In this setup we used a book with a black cover as a screen a measuring scale to measure and mark the foci and the circle of least confusion First step is to prepare the required spiro cylindrical lens Place the plus 5 diopter sphere in the trial frame and then the plus 5 diopter cylinder with its axis at 180 degrees Let us pause for a moment to understand what is going on in the spiro cylindrical system. The power of the spiro cylinder in the horizontal as well as the vertical meridian needs to be understood. As mentioned before, where a cylinder axis is, there is no power. Therefore, in the 180 degree axis where the axis of the cylinder is, there is zero contribution from the cylinder and therefore the total power in the 180 degree meridian is only from the sphere that is plus 5 diopters in the opposite axis where all the power of the cylinder is acting when combined with that of the sphere the total power in the vertical meridian will be plus 10 diopters we know that the focal length in meters is the inverse of the dioptric power therefore in the horizontal axis where the dioptric power is plus 5 diopters the focal length or the focal point will be 1 by 5th of a meter or 20 cm similarly in the vertical axis the focal point can theoretically be calculated as 10 cm 
and as the circle of least confusion should be in the middle of the two foci, in this experimental setup, we theoretically place it at 15 centimeters. Once our Spiro cylinder is set up, we have to fix the screen. In our case, we used a book. The light source was an ordinary LED torch, which was placed about two or three meters away from the screen. If the light source is placed too close, then it is difficult to appreciate the changes because we generally assume that the rays of light incident on the Spiro cylinder should be almost parallel and not diverging. The next step is to measure and mark 10, 15 and 20 centimeters from the screen to represent the theoretical principal foci and the circle of least confusion. So what should we expect from this experiment? Obviously, we are expecting to see two principal foci, one horizontal line and the other a vertical line. When the lenses are held at 20 cm from the screen, a vertical line is seen. And this is the first principal focus. And when the lens is at 10 cm from the screen, a horizontal line, which is the second principal focus, should be seen. At 15 cm, a more or less perfect circle should be expected as that is the midpoint of the two foci and the position of the circle of least confusion. In between the circle of least confusion and the two foci, we should expect infinite number of horizontal and vertical ellipses. The whole thing, the two foci, the circle of least confusion, the ellipses together constitute the conoid of Sturm. Let us now take a look at the experiment itself. This is the experimental setup. This is the torch as a light source. That's a trial frame and the book which is acting as a screen. These are the markings at 10, 15 and 20 centimeters. As expected, when the spiro cylindrical lens system was moved to 10 centimeters, a horizontal line was seen on the screen and this was the second of the principal foci. On placing the lens system at 20 cm, as expected, a vertical line was observed which was the first of the principal foci. And in the middle, at 15 cm, a perfect circle corresponding to the circle of least confusion was observed. That's the first principal focus. That's the circle of least confusion at 15 centimeters. It's a perfect circle at that point. And the second focal point at 10 centimeters. In between the two foci, are infinite number of horizontal and vertical ellipses. Between the first focal point and the circle of least confusion, there are infinite number of vertical ellipses. And between the circle of least confusion and the second focal point, there are infinite horizontal ellipses. The principal foci, the circle of least confusion, along with all the infinite ellipses constitute the conoid of Sturm, described four centuries ago by Johann Christoph Sturm. Thank you very much.